Hey everybody, gonna go visit the KFGO morning crew. They got the llama back in studio once again. So let's go uh, take a peek inside the uh, KFGO studio and see the llama. Come on. And animal curator Tom Schmaltz. Good morning to you all. Good, Good morning. morning. Reese looks like Reese could work for the Secret Service. For some reason, <laughs> Reese has been, his eyes have been trained in on something here in our he studio. He's very interested in what's happening in the other rooms and everybody who's come to see him. And we know that he's your favorite. Reese so we beautiful. wanted to bring him back uh, one more time this season um, because he does travel really well. And, and in promoting, you know, we can take him anywhere. Well, and it, and, it, and it just holds to the fact that we have tried to say, you talk about a return trip, we've been trying to tell people, you can go to the zoo in May and July and August and September. There's always something new at the zoo. Yes. And when you see these animals, Bonnie mentioned it right away, well, it looks a little bit different this time. I mean, there's, there's always something unique and different when you visit the zoo. That's true. It, there's no two days like at the zoo. Not for the staff, not for the visitors, not for anyone. And so animal behavior itself <laughs> changes so much. Uh, but yeah, Reese travels really well. And, and you know, we can take him to, we mentioned the, the, the hospital, the children wards, uh, VA um, hospitals and centers and uh, nursing homes and so and schools so Reese does travel he's only one of the outreach programs that we have and also we want to mention the adopt an animal program the sponsored animal adopt program. Reese you can we can adopt Reese we, you can can and I take him home <laughs> well, we Joel's got you. dibs on the turtle <laughs> <laughs> well we're going to just drop that, drop that tortoise off at Joel's we saw Joel today he's a good sport to bring animals in here he took a lot on Oh, oh. Literally, but um, yes, you can. And we, we changed it up on this past year, so people can go on our website and check out the sponsored animal program. Because what we've done is we had different um, costs, fees for the, the certain animal that took the time and the keeping. But what we've done is we made different levels. So for any level, from fifty dollars on up to a thousand, you can sponsor any animal at the zoo. It's just your level of sponsorship and you, what you receive for that level. You'll get a biography of that animal, the birthday, a picture. Um, at the higher levels, you get a plush animal with it. So there's every level you can now um, hopefully afford so you can have part in that animal's life. And 100% of your donation to the sponsor of animal goes for the daily care of that animal. Very good, I was just gonna ask you that, very cool. Tom, I know last week when you guys were in, we talked about, you know, the, the animals are starting to prepare for winter. Some of them, I mean, I don't think Reese hibernates or does he, does Reese hibernate? No, no. Reese is up and ready to boogie all year. <laughs> does he go through changes though, fur-wise, coat-wise, um, activity, what he does? It you know? just gets a little thicker and you know, he's three years old, so he's growing. And when you... I get a little thicker too. <laughs> <laughs> we all do, I think. Well, so let, let me ask you now, people that have been to the zoo in May and June and July and August, what are the hours now? Because people, oh, that's right, we need to get back down to the zoo. We want to make sure we get down there, um, you know, b before winter unfortunately starts creeping up on us. Yes, we're open every day from 10 to 4, mm. and that includes weekends. And then we extended um, into October, which was Friday, Saturdays, and Sundays through October for regular, regular visitation. And also, um, by appointment after October. So people can say, hey, I've got a group that wants to come down to the zoo, give us a call, because we're there taking care of the animals every day anyway. In terms of the outreach programs, Kathy, how, how far will you guys go? Do you just stay down in the Wabaton, Breckenridge area, say in terms of a nursing home or a school or something like that? No, we go Jamestown, St. Cloud, we've been all over. Tri state area mostly, but depending on the circumstances, so if we can make it Devil's work and, Lake. and not stress yeah. the animal. Devil's Lake, we've been there for their bird uh, festivals, um, you know, at the refuges, things like that. So it depends on, you know, what the circumstance, what they're asking uh, for their. Sometimes we take, you know, and just go do full programs on a certain curriculum in a school or a lyceum um, that we take more staff with and, and uh, can judge it that way. And refresh our memory too. Now, where where does Reese typically live? A llama. Where do where where do llamas typically live, Tom? Besides the city. They came. They come out of South America, and they were domesticated thousands of years ago and used as pack animals for their wool and their meat and milk. So you know, in the mountains of South America, they were like our cow was to our early settlers. 
Now, are they endangered, uh, like the elephants, you know, for ivory tusks or anything like that? No, llamas have been domesticated so many times. There is no true wild llamas left. There's wild alpacas, guanacos, and some of the others in the camelid species, but llamas have been domesticated for, I think it's right around 4,000 years now. Now I'm watching Reese, and boy, his ears are just fine-tuned. His head's been swiveling. They're very alert or in, in tune with what's going on around them, it seems like. Oh, yeah. They're excellent guard animals, and they watch everything, and they like to come up and see people. Reese is so socialized that he just loves to go where there's people and come up face-to-face -to, -face to greet them because that's how llamas greet each other, and that's what he does to us. So, yeah. They're excellent for that way for guard animals. And Kathy, you know, quickly tell us firsthand what it's like, say, when you're taking Reese into a nursing home setting. What it, what is that experience it's like? The best feeling in the world when you can get response from someone. There, there's there are people who love animals that look forward to it, and then you have some residents that may not, you know, even want to be at the program or don't really know, you know, everything that all their senses around them, and you bring an animal in, and animals are very therapeutic. When you can get a response, a smile, a thumbs up, it's a day maker. And the staff will tell us afterwards, they'll say, oh my gosh, you don't know what, you know, Alice did today, or, or Jim, or somebody. They really, really like this. This was, and they have tears in their eyes, thank you. This was such a good day for our residents. And you know you're making a difference, especially if it comes to maybe somebody with Alzheimer's or memory problems, and, exactly. and, and you bring in Reese or another animal, and you see you see the smile, or you may see the tears or something, you know that you're having an impact. And if they're getting half the experience out of it that we are, just by being there with them, they, there are day makers too, Bonnie. All right, and I know we can go to chahankavazoo.org for more information. Uh, is that the best way if somebody wants to take a part in an outreach program yeah. or do behind the scenes or something you like that? Go to our website or log on Facebook or give us a call. Any way that works for you, we will email, whatever, we'll get back to you. Well, your child was very well behaved today. So far, so good. <laughs> so far is the key word. <laughs> Thanks for bringing him in, Thank Kathy you. and Tom. Thank yeah. you. Yep, we'll catch you guys again next week. That's Kathy Dickman, Zoom Director at Jahanka the Zoo in Wapaton, and Animal Curator Tom Schmaltz. We always enjoy the visits and the different animals that they bring in. And yeah, Reese was a big hit. It was kind of cool, but they brought Reese back. We do have Facebook Live videos out there. We'll be podcasting the interviews so you can uh, hear it again or see more. We head into the weather cave now with the tall Tom Shamansky. I think, yeah, Reese, you're still taller than Reese. Reese is pretty tall, but if, if Reese was capable to go on his hind legs, I don't know if he could. Then he'd have you beat. <laughs> I think that would be good. You probably, because I bet he can kick pretty good if he wanted to. Beautiful animal, though. Those eyes. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I think he should. <laughs> He's giving Tom kisses right now. So sweet. Those guys? Oh, 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 oh.